So far, we have said that a series is either convergent or divergent. We've been trying to determine which. Um, now we're going to create two subcategories of convergence. So um, first of all, when you start with a series, as we've seen before, you either are convergent or you are divergent. One or the other. have to be one of those. But now, if you are convergent, we subcategorize that into um, if the absolute value of the terms, if that series converges, then we call this absolute convergence. In other words, we're saying this series not only converges, it converges absolutely. Um, if you take the absolute value of the series, those terms, and this is divergent, then we say that our series is conditionally convergent. So we've got these two subcategories. Um, here it is kind of written out fully. So if a series converges and the series of its absolute value of terms converges, then we say that that series is absolutely convergent. Likewise, if you have a convergent series and you look at the absolute value and that series diverges, then that original series is called conditionally convergent. Um, now, why do we care? Why take convergence and give two different flavors? Well, um, when we look at power series in a little bit, things that are absolutely convergent will have a nice property that we'll take advantage of. Um, but a more interesting thing that we really don't use directly, but is highlights the difference between infinite sums and finite sums. It turns out that if a series is absolutely convergent, then if you add that up in some random order, or however you want to rearrange the terms, it'll always add up to the same thing. So if this adds up to 5, and you go through and just start shuffling all those numbers around, it still adds up to 5. Just like for finite sums, what you've been used to your whole life. But if it's conditionally convergent, if this adds up to 5, I can rearrange the numbers so it adds up to 6, or 100, or negative 15, or pi, or e, or I can even make it diverge. So um, that is a little bit weird the first time you think about it. Um, but I'll do an example, and there's an example in the book, but I'll do an example later to kind of highlight that, um, how you would go about rearranging. Uh, this is something the book calls our rearrangement theorem. But things that are absolutely convergent, are it's a stronger type of convergence in the sense that the order doesn't matter. However you want to add them up, it'll always come out the same. Things that are conditionally convergent, you really do have to add them up in the order they're listed. If you start messing with the order, you can argue different sums. So um, when we're looking at alternating series, you're going to be asked not only does the series converge, but also classify whether it's absolute or conditional. And um, we could look at a very simple example. Think about the difference between something like negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared from 1 to infinity, and n from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Think about that a second. These are both alternating series. You could make an argument, you know, the, the u sub n's here are 1 over n squared. Those are positive, decreasing, heading to 0. Positive, non-increasing, headed to 0. Here the un's are 1 over n, also positive, non-increasing, headed to 0. So these are both convergent series. They converge by AST. You could make that argument there. But if you take the absolute value of this series, you get a convergent p-series, 1 over n squared. If you take the absolute value of the terms of this series, you get a divergent p-series. So these are both convergent series. No problem there. They are convergent. But they both have 
they have different flavors of convergence. This is absolute because if you took the absolute value, that's also convergent. Here, if you take the absolute value, you get something divergent. So the series itself is convergent, um, but there's different behavior when you look at the absolute value in those two. Um, so when, when we're looking at series from now on, you'll also be asked to determine whether that convergence is absolute or conditional.